and they last me until day. And it lasts me until day Now I can't see why, darling You don't stop your little evil way Tell me, darling What can I do to change your mind? Now tell me, baby What can I do to change your mind? Now you keep the little pine top wearing When bothered all the time Welcome to Blues After Hours. I'm Mae Kramer, your host from 9 to 1 tonight with Blues. It is August countdown here at WGBH Radio. With only three days to go, we still have about $19,000 left to raise. And your, sh- your support will help us reach our goal by the end of the fiscal year. That fiscal year ends Monday at midnight, August 31st. Rush your check to WGBH, Box 200, Boston 02134. Or you can call us toll-free at 1-800-492-1111. And thank you from 89.7 FM, WGBH Boston, a world of choice. Well, we're going to start things off with Pine Top Perkins. This is 89.7 FM, WGBH in Boston. We are Blues After Hours. I'm crazy about you, baby. Just haven't got the price. It's hot, don't be now. Swear now, you're gonna die. Crazy about your love, and I like smoke night and day. Now I'm crazy about your love, and like smoke night and day. The one is trying to steal my little love away Yeah, I'm going back on board and get my old galaxy Going back home, get my old galaxy She's 
the caviar time, but you got the same old things to do.
And you're tuned to 89.7 FM, WGBH Boston, Blues After Hours. And it is my great pleasure to welcome Lefty Diz to the studio. Hi, Lefty. Hello. How are you doing? Fine, fine. Yeah? First time in Boston? Uh, in a while. Yeah? First time in a while. How does it seem to you? Same great city. <laughs> you played last night at the Rhineborn up in yes, Antrim. Yes, I did. Yeah, that's out in the country, huh? Yes, it is. And tomorrow night at the Dry Dock in Nantasket Beach in Hull. Yes. You're going to go in the water? Why not? <laughs> so if, if, if folks go up tomorrow to uh, check out the beach, they might see you. Of course. All right. Um, now, Lefty is obvious how you got the name Lefty, but maybe people would like to know how you got the name Diz. Well, like, uh, you know, when you're 8, 9, 10 years old, I love jazz music. And uh, I had my adolescent voice, and I could mimic the trumpet like Dizzy Gillespie. And I'd go around making the trumpet sounds, and the children would call me Dizzy Gillespie. Can, and, you, can you do a little trumpet sound? Well, I can't do that now. <laughs> you don't want to give us a little trumpet? <laughs> I, could, I could never do that now, you know. And um, as you grew up, it went from Dizzy Gillespie to Diz. Mm -hmm. When did you first start picking up uh, an instrument? or? Oh, well, like well, five, six years old. Mm -hmm. And that was guitar? No, piano. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah? And how how did you learn it? Who? Uh... Well, my father played piano. So you had one at home? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And and were your hands big enough to make chords and everything at five, six years old? You have to stretch the fingers. You know what? You watch and you stretch your little fingers. I guess being left-handed, you probably had a good, strong uh, bass left hand, so piano maybe was good instrument well, actually, for yeah. you. Yeah. So then how'd you pick up uh, guitar and any of the other? Well, that came later because I always wanted a tenor saxophone, but the old man wouldn't let me have that. I said, no, They're expensive, no. aren't they? Well, yeah, they, yes, they were expensive. And he says, well, uh, you don't want to really go into a horn when you're seven, eight, and ten years old. He says, because you might have respiratory problems later on, you know. I says, well, hey, I wanted to play like Louis Jordan. Oh, yeah. You know, I yeah. always wanted that saxophone. Because alto is smaller. Yeah, I know, you know, but I always wanted that horn. It says, no O. It says, it's okay. <laughs> was he tough, your dad? Well, he was an ordinary parent, you know. And, um, but like, when you sit down at the piano, you want to be outside with the rest of the kids. You hear everybody outside having a good time, and, hey, I want to be out there, too. Sit down, boy. <laughs> you know, this type thing. When uh, now, where'd you grow up? In Chicago. Uh huh. Well, mm -hmm. So, and did you have a big family? Everybody played yeah. music. Yeah, well, I got uh, eight brothers and seven sisters. <laughs> <laughs> and where were you in the family? I, I'm number five. Uh huh. So, who was your best friend in the family? 
Oh, well, well, you know, I like them all. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd you hang um, out with? Though? Well, I, I, my brother that's two years older than me. We uh -huh. hung together. And did you both play music when you were Yeah, there? he played saxophone. Oh, nice. Yeah, oh, so you wanted to play because he played. No, he didn't play at the time. Uh -huh. at the time did, you know. did you ever play in a band with any of your brothers and sisters? Uh, off and on, we do now. Oh, very nice. Yeah, off and on, you know. Uh -huh. And so they're still up around Chicago, too? Well, no, we're scattered out everywhere. I've got uh, one, two, three... Four sisters in Chicago and three brothers. Wow. That's, that's still a, such a big family, huh? Yeah. And and so now you picked up guitar at what age? About? I was like 21, 22. Oh, so you were playing piano all that time in between? Well, no, because like I say, I learned to play piano, but uh, I wasn't exactly just into music all the time. You know, and... Uh, what, what were you doing instead? Well, I had to go to school and, you know, <laughs> the military and then... I says, well, maybe I'll play a little music. Uh -huh. Give it a try. How did they, how'd your family react to that? Well, they said, well, do what you want to do. Uh -huh. you know? And like the guitar, like my uncles, you know, they all played guitars and pianos and stuff. And uh, I'd pick up you know, the guitar. And I couldn't restring it, you know, because it wasn't mine. Oh. So restring it to left hand, you Yes. Mean? So did you turn it upside down then? The only way. Right, that's the only other option, right? You can either right. restring it, retune it, or turn it upside I'll turn down. Turn it upside down, yeah. <laughs> so what uh, what kind of guitar was that? Was that a big hollow body yeah, Stella, or electric? Like you know, Stella guitar, the old acoustic guitar. Oh sure. Yeah. So were you playing a different kind of music than the Chicago blues then? Well, like um, you just pick up the guitar and you, you have to basically you have to teach yourself, you know. So you learn uh, the Jimmy Reed type stuff, you know. Yeah, that's three chords. Yeah. Right. Even I could learn that, I think. Well, maybe, of course. I'm not, maybe. Why not? <laughs> I'm not sure. I, I don't know if I have the patience to practice. Well, if you're interested in it, you know. you got to practice. Oh, yes. Yes, do you? Well, yeah. Uh, still? Of course. When do you practice? <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, music is like medicine and law. You always practice you're never good enough. Right? <laughs> well, I, I hope practice will make perfect well, or something. I hope so. <laughs> I'm searching for that lost chord. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm waiting to paint my masterpiece. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so now, if you write a song, how do you get your ideas to write a song? Well, I look around me. I pay attention to what people say. I look at different situations. That's what it's about. That's life. Shall, shall we play a song? Well, why not? Shall we do that? Well, shall we pick one uh, from the Chicago Blues at the Burnley Blues Festival from 1991? Okay. How about, what, what do you say? Which one shall we pick? Shall Ooh. we do Too Late? Do we pick yeah, Too Late? Yeah, that's fine. All right. Okay. You're tuned to Blues After Hours. This is 89.7 FM WGBH in Boston. This is Lefty Diz, Too Late. <laughs> I'm gonna 
Hello, this is John Kerr again. Well, that number is now down to a tantalizing $19,800, the amount of money we still have to raise in our big countdown to the end of our fiscal year. But that countdown is going to happen Monday at midnight. That's when our fiscal year closes. So I'm asking each and every one of you who care about WGBH Radio to add your name to the list of people who've already called and who have made pledges. Our address for your check, hopefully postmarked by midnight and on Monday, is WGBH Radio, Box 200, Boston 02134. Or pick up your phone now and call us at 1-800-492-1111 with your pledge. That call is toll-free. Thanks for joining with us. Thanks for making this countdown successful. This is a time when every pledge and every letter counts. This is 89.7 FM, WGBH Radio, Boston, a world of choice. This is Lil Thing in memory of the great Hound Dog Taylor. I had the pleasure of working with him. I had the pleasure, I think I was the last man to play the guitar with him. As a matter of fact, I know I was. Shucks. Sadie, you come back home tonight. Oh, say, when you come back home tonight, I love you. You'll make everything all right. Sadie, what do you want your man to do? Oh, say, yeah. What you want your man to do? I love you. I don't want no one but you. Say it. I love you with all my heart. Oh, say it. I love you with all my heart. There was no reason, no reason for us to part. I cried like a baby all night long. Oh, yeah. cried like a baby all night long. Say that. You know you're doing me wrong I tried to call you And I called you on the phone Oh, I tried to call you Trying to call you on the phone Another man answered So you ought to leave that gal alone Jumped in my car And I drove up to your door Lord, I jumped in my car And I drove up to your door and Your mama told me Gal don't need you anymore Alone again tonight. Oh, have mercy, say, yeah. I'm alone again tonight. Say, do you need me? Make everything all right.
you want your man to do. I say that. What you want your man to do. You know, I'm so in love with you. Say then, I love you with all my heart. Oh, say that I love you with all my heart There was no reason No reason for us to part with you. And that tune is called Sadie. And I'm here with Lefty Diz, May Kramer. This is 89.7 FM. WGBH Boston. We're just looking at the label. That is the JSP record label where you can find Lefty Disc. What's the name of that CD? Uh, ain't It Nice to Be Loved. Oh, Ain't It Nice to Be Loved. I bet you could tell the story of that title. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, on an easier topic. All right. We'll come back to that topic. Without a doubt. Okay, because that is a lot about the blues. <laughs> what can I say? I don't know. All right. <laughs> um, I understand you worked with the Dells. Yeah. You were playing guitar with the Dells? Yeah. Well, what was that like? That's very different than uh, what you're doing now. Well, like, uh, I was playing, uh, like, we, we call it doo-wops before the blues. Sure. And musically, what was... Well, uh, you see, uh, growing up listening to the blues, you say, well, I can play this anytime. You know, wrong. Definitely wrong. Which I found out. So you mean you tried playing with the Dells and it was difficult? No, 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 no. No, no. I was playing with the Dells before I got into the blues. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So then the transition to making, to playing the blues, how was that? What made you decide to do that? Well, I wanted to make sure I could do it. And I thought it was very easy, which is not. The blues is some of the most difficult music you can play because true blues is not written, it's felt. You understand? Yeah. Yeah. And the minute you think you can play it, look out. You're in for a rude awakening. Does it make you feel better when you play? Of course. Yeah. Otherwise, I'd do something different. You know, I found that, um, especially coming, even just playing the music, like just playing the records, I always feel better after, even if I'm tired after I work for four hours at the radio station, but I always feel so much better. There's something about this music that just lifts you up. Well, you see, when, when I'm playing, I'm saying what other people are feeling. You know, what they're feeling, I'm putting in the music. It's spontaneous. Is there some way that you get... And you, you work to them. If everybody's having a good time, and there's one person sitting over there looking at you, you work to that person. And sooner or later, they'll start to boogie. You're going to get them. <laughs> <laughs> now, now um, I want to describe what 
Lefty Diz looks like to the people who can't see him, who aren't sitting across from him like I am. He is a very strong man. He's thin and strong. And you can tell that he is really strong. And he has very, very strong eyes. They look at you and they just grab you. <laughs> and he and he can move his hat with his ears. <laughs> now, did you ever have any other nicknames? Well, many nicknames. What were some I of those? Say on <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose people who uh, know something about Lefty Diz know that you've worked with people like Junior Wells yes. and Hound Dog Taylor. And uh, you just told me you played with Magic Sam and yes, Earl and Earl Hooker. Yes. So maybe you'd like to remember a little bit about some of those people for us. Well, um, I, I was doing stuff with Earl Hooker before Magic Sam a little bit because uh, actually I think I got a lot of my style from Earl Hooker because Earl could play the blues. He could play the blues so plain you could see the notes flying around the room. Any, 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 anything you see, he can make the guitar say. Well, he also worked with Junior Wells. Yes. Oh, definitely. So was that kind of a crowd? I mean, you're younger than those guys. Well, hey, you have to grow up, you know. So I, did, I wanted to be with the big boys. Did they treat you like a kid at all? Or? No. <laughs> I wouldn't allow that. Well, what, what did you do then? Everything they did. <laughs> <laughs> Hound Dog, oh, he was one great guy. Uh -huh. He nice was guy. one great guy. He wouldn't lie to you for nothing in the world. If Hound Dog said something, believe it. That's the way it was. That's nice to work with people like that. Yeah. Yeah. He was a great guy. And what about Junior Wells? What was he like to work Junior? with? <laughs> well, hey, you know, that's my cut buddy. We're all right. <laughs> he can do no wrong. <laughs> He's funny on stage. Um, you know, sometimes he... He hears something he doesn't like, and he'll let you know right on stage. Well, yes, definitely. Did you ever do that to him? Uh, of course. <laughs> he blew it. <laughs> I was his band leader. You understand? Sure. And I said, hey, not that. <laughs> <laughs> How, when you did an arrangement with uh, someone like Hound Dog or someone like uh, Junior Wells, what was it like uh, setting, did you spend a whole lot of time as a band leader figuring out how the music would uh, come across, what it would be like, who would get the breaks, or did that change uh, uh, just spontaneously? It was on? spontaneous. So you didn't really work a whole bunch of stuff ahead of time? No, no, because when you work in your different clubs and your different festivals, you know, you lock different little tidbits in your memory banks, you know, Keep it there until the studio time. Then do it. Now, um, I've heard some people say, you know, that you you try to cut someone and, and you know, play a little better than someone. Um, Jimmy Rogers used to talk about that. They they try to, you know, play a little better than someone else in the band and, and play, um, you know, one person would play a little and the other one would try to top them. Well, that was in the old days, you know. That was in the old days. Like uh, when musicians... Back at one time, if you play for this guy, you couldn't play with anybody else, basically, you know, stuff like that, because it was the uh, band leaders that was having the thing together, you know, they was having that. Did you ever play with a big band at all? Yes, I played with Sonny Thompson uh -huh. out of King Recording Company. Oh, now that must have been interesting, and yeah. you were playing guitar with them? Yes. Well, that's a different kind of, you know, ka-chunk, ka-chunk, it's like a different kind of guitar with well, a Well, uh, we band. were doing... Uh, we were doing stuff uh, like behind D. Clark, Wade Flemings. Oh, sure. Lula Reed. All oh, these people. yes. Yeah. Uh huh. Sure. You know. So, uh, was it less music to play, or? Well, uh, it was. It was uh, more, more, more arrangements. More for the, for the arrangements. So you did. You did have to decide ahead yeah. of time. Oh, yeah. On that, yeah. Yeah. You, you have to charge for that. Now, if you if you could play any kind of music now, just I mean blues or whatever, but. And anything that you haven't tried before, what would that be? Well, let's see. Country and Western. No. Of course. And what would that be like? I think it would be fun. It would be great to do. you got the voice for it. Well, thank you. I'll try it one day. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, like the Country and Western artists, they write great lyrics. Great lyrics. 
It's not that different than blues. No. I don't think. Actually, it's not. Actually, it's not. It tells the same story. Same thing. In other words, blues is blues is blues is blues. And you were saying before that blues has changed since you've known it. Well, not, not uh, blues itself has changed, since the, the artists have changed. Uh, what I mean by that is we are more togetherness. We are more togetherness as a, a blues family. We are very, very tight together. Like, uh, like we're so close till uh, you can uh, walk off, off your bandstand, go down to another club. Somebody can leave that club and come down there. And you'll never notice they're gone. You know, because they're going to fit right in. We listen to each other very closely. That's how we got Chicago Blues together. We work together. There's no uh, animosity. There's no uh, one ups upmanship. We don't have that. We work together as a unit. Do you feel that you are um, helping to bring some younger blues players up? Oh, definitely. Who, who would some of them be? Oh, wow, there's numerous young guys in Chicago. Like, um, we have, like, uh, the Blue Monday sets, and uh, we have, like, say, a two-hour, three-hour thing where the young ones come in. And um, some are 10, 11 years old. And young drummers, you know, little bass players and a whole bit, little harmonica players. And uh, we let them get the feel of what it is. Well, what's your advice to someone trying to pick up blues guitar? Well, watch your surroundings, like I say, you know, and watch what the musicians are doing and uh, try to get a feel for it. Pay very close attention. Just look around you and you'll feel it. And then go for it. Should we play another song? Why not? All right. How about uh, Teardrops on My Pillow? Fine with me? Yeah. All right. Of course.
juke joint. Peep in the door. We're doing the boogie woogie. In the middle of the floor. I didn't come see me early in the morning. Baby, by the break of day. Oh, you ought to be the tear drops off my pillow. Of 18, 
She began to think she's grown That's the kind of sweet young thing You sure enough can't keep it home You'll have to see her early in the morning Hello, Boston. This is WBGH 89.7 FM. Thank you. And then what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Trying to do me? Say who you are. Oh, well, hell, why not? <laughs> I am Lefty Des. And I am Mae Kramer. <laughs> this is 89.7 FM. You're tuned to Blues After Hours, and we are having the great pleasure of enjoying the company of Mr. Lefty Diz from Chicago, who is here to play at the Dry Dock in Hull tomorrow night. His whole band is here. I've got the entire band enjoying the company of the studio. And that we'll hear them laughing in the background. Uh, tomorrow night at the Dry Dock on Nantasket Avenue in Hull, Massachusetts, Blues Lovers. This is the show to see. And we hope you'll get there, along with their special guest, Joan Baby from Chicago. And it is quite a show. And I can promise you a good show because uh, Lefty Diz is one of the most enjoyable, entertaining people that we've met here at GBH in a long time. We hope you'll come back. I'll try to. I'll give you a microphone to say hello. <laughs> well, hello, hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to play one more tune. Uh, we're going to play Look on Yonder's Wall, and we're going to say goodnight, and thank you again for coming. Thank you. I had a very nice time. Thank you. Look on Yonder's Wall, Lefty Diz. Look on Yonder's Wall. <laughs> Look on yonder's wall And me down my walking cane I'm gonna find me another woman Yonder girl to me I know he's been in the army But I know he's mighty tough I don't know how many men he killed I believe he killed enough Look on yonder's wall Every day I walk again 